Hey guys, welcome to Safi Mixed. In this video, I'm discussing a simple method of writing density matrix for a quantum mechanical system and introducing a relative phase into it in Mathematica. So let's see how can we do this. You see, here I'm writing this command in order to uh, clear the memory of mathematical kernel and then I construct a function for writing cats through this one command and if you know much about how this command works I would suggest you to watch my video on this topic with name quantum mechanics with Mathematica. However, I would just like to explain the meanings of the variables that I'm writing in the argument of function k. Here j and i are numbers and j represents a particular k and the value of i gives the dimensions. For example, if I set i equals 1 then i varies from 0 to 1. Therefore, the space is two dimension and if I set i equals 2 then the space is three dimensional. To see how this works, I first read this to Mathematica and then run this for two different choices like the one over here. Here I said j equals 0 and i equals 1. This one means that there are two values 0 and 1. So the space is two dimensional and it gives me this kit and if I change this to 1 I'll get the second kit which is excited state. So it gives me the ground and excited states and if I change this to 2 then the space is 3 dimension and I'll get a column matrix of 3 rows and I can change this value to get the form of the other two cats for a three-dimensional helper space. Okay, next I want to construct a superposition state by using this definition of cat and that I can do by using a relation like this one where I call psi as a function of parameter k and I apply the sum command of Mathematica and then I multiply it with probability amplitudes am and write the kits as like this in here again I sum over parameter m and where m stands now for j which represents the which stands for the number of kits so if I define this so now let me check this definition of k for different values of k. For example, if I said k equals 1, then I would have a k for a two-dimensional space where a0 and a1 are the probability amplitudes of 0 and 1 k. And if I said this equal to 2, I would have a k for three-dimensional space with three different probability amplitudes for the three Kits of the space. I can give any allowed values to these probability amplitude. For example, I can construct a maximal superposition state by letting the values of a0 goes to 1 over square root 2 and a1 goes to 1 over square root 2 by using the replace command. And if I run this, you will see now this will give me a maximal superposition state of a qubit. Similarly, I can construct a superposition state for a qubit by changing the argument of psi from 1 to 2 like I'm doing in this case. If I run this, I then get a superposition state for a Q-trait. Okay, with that practice done, let us use the definition of state vector to construct density matrix that I can do by constructing a command like this one where I define density matrix as a function of parameter k and I multiplied the kit with its conjugate. Here I'm putting kit and here I'm putting the conjugate transpose of kit. So if I read this to Mathematica, then I can construct different density matrix by changing, by giving different values to k. For example, for a dude, for example, for a qubit, I can construct a generalized density matrix by putting argument 1 over here and now you see here we have conjugate, conjugate, conjugate with a0 
A1 and A1 at different positions. And if you are sure that the two probability amplitudes are real, then I can remove these conjugates and can simplify this by adding another command of this form assumptions A0 and A1. I'm putting them inside a list. And I tell Mathematica that these two numbers belong to integer. That is, they are real numbers. And if I now run this form of the command, I get this form of the density matrix. Now there are no conjugate. Mathematica has multiplied A0 with A0, A1 with A0 and so on to reduce it into this form. Now let's see how can we add a relative phase between the two cats. That I can do by changing the probability amplitudes like I'm doing over here. What I do, I'm letting A0 goes to a and a1 goes to b times exponent minus iota phi that is the probability amplitude a1 is a complex number with phase defined by this exponential function and alongside i tell mathematica to treat the parameters a b and phi as numbers so that none of them be enclosed inside the argument of conjugate like in this case over here. So if I run this form of I get a density matrix with relative phase exponent iota phi between the probability amplitude are between the two cats 0 and 1. So this way you can add a relative phase to the density matrix and I can do the same thing for a three-dimensional header space. I copy this command, I put this over here and I just change the argument of density matrix from 1 to 2. Now I would have a 3 by 3 density matrix in which the probability amplitude of 0 cat would be replaced with A, the probability amplitude of 1 cat would be replaced with B exponent iota phi and the probability amplitude of third cat would be A3 which I haven't changed from the basic definition if I look what so it is not A3 it is A2. I can even change A2 by using this A2, A2 goes to C and I incorporate C inside this list to let Mathematica know that C is also an integer and if now I run this command the conjugate in front of A2, A2 would first be converted into C and then the conjugate would be removed. If I run this, yes, now you see this is a density matrix uh, for a Q trait with probability amplitude A, B, C and a relative phase exponent iota phi between A and B or uh, B and C. Here is a relative phase. I can add another relative phase by defining this thing over here. I uh, just copy this. I put it over here and I write this as 2. If I run this now, we would have another uh, form of the density matrix. Now again, since I haven't uh, since I haven't told Mathematica the form of phi 2, therefore it is putting conjugate over here, I can straight away remove this by telling Mathematica that phi 2 is also a number. And if I run now this, I would have this final form of the density matrix. So this way you can construct a density matrix inside Mathematica. If you haven't subscribed to Sophimax, kindly do support the channel through your valued subscription. Thanks for watching.